Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for tonight's webinar. My name is Anne Goggin, and I work in the Environment section of Limerick City and County Council. You're very welcome to this, the second in our series of European Green Leaf webinars. Uh, once again, the theme tonight is biodiversity, but while last week we looked at what we could do in our own gardens to make more room for nature, tonight we're moving out into more public areas. With me tonight in the panel is um, Sinead MacDonald, our Environmental Awareness Officer, and our presenter tonight is Rachel Bain. Rachel is the Biodiversity Officer with the Causeway Coast in Glens Borough Council and manager of the Don't Mow Let It Grow project, which is the focus of our presentation tonight. So with that, I'll hand you over to Rachel. Hi, everyone. Uh, hopefully we'll get this uh, show on the road. Let me just share my screen. Perfect. Um, thanks very much for inviting me tonight. Um, apologies for the lockdown here, um, but uh, we're, we're all in the same boat. Um, as I said before, I'm the Biodiversity Officer um, for Cosby Coast and Benz on the north coast of Northern Ireland. Um, and I just want to tell you a little bit about our Don't Mow project. If my tablet will work. Uh oh. Oh dear. Oh, there we go. Always oh, too too much to ask for technology. Um, the Don't Mow Let It Grow project was a partnership project between the uh, Department of Infrastructure, Roads, the Northern Ireland Environment Agency and the Causeway Coast and Glens Borough Council. And we were lucky to be funded through the Heritage Lottery Fund and uh, the Landfill Community Fund. And it ran for three years and I spent those three years trying to persuade everybody just to take it easy and let the grass grow um, and it's amazing what will come when you do that. Why should we care about our um, hay meadows and our pollinators and our wildflowers? Well there's been a huge decline in our hay meadows over the last of oh, 10-20 years. Um, a lot of pressure through changes in agriculture um, through changes in even just how people manage their own gardens, um, you know, fads for um, decking and uh, gravel uh, has driven away our native wildflowers and our pollinators. Um, and our pollinators in particular, they also provide us with food services, ecosystem services. Um, and you'll see on the slide here, um, the caterpillars and moth uh, and just to remind us all that um, moths and hoverflies are pollinators as well as our bumblebees and our solitary bees um, and shouldn't be forgotten. The reason why we decided to look at um, road verges and uh, council parks, community grassland, is that they, they're a huge refuge for um, our, our seed bank for native flowers and uh, biodiversity, wildflowers, insects. They also create a nice link, a biodiversity highway linking one site to another. Um, this particular slide is of our Drum Croon Road um, reserve. Uh, oh, see, lockdown in it, the brain goes. Um, our Drum Croon Road site, um, which is one of our oldest and longest running um, road verges. I should also say that most of the pictures in this slide are also taken from our own site um, and we actually haven't planted anything. We've just allowed the seed bank to recover and grow itself. Another reason for picking the council parks and the road verges is they're very visible. Lots of people passing, lots of people seeing them. Um, and this was a conscious decision in order to help promote what we were trying to do. This verge here is our Car Hill verge coming into Garba um, and it has hundreds, literally hundreds of spikes of orchids um, of varying kinds. Part of the project was community and volunteer engagement as well. Um, it was very important that we got this support and the understanding of the wider community as to what we were doing. So we ran a whole load of events and had a great amount of fun 
we also recruited um, lots of volunteers to help us deliver the project. Um, in the end, I think we have about 40 volunteers currently helping doing various things from our annual surveys to photography to running the Facebook page. Um, uh, and basically, if anybody wants to get involved, we always have a skill for them. And without the dedicated support of our volunteers and the amount of effort and energy we went into to doing events and chatting to people and telling um, them what we were up to and, and understanding that it wasn't an ab land abandonment, but that it was an active choice and the reasons why um, has really helped make the project a success. Um, as part of uh, the project as well, we did an awful lot of training, not only for our volunteers, um, but also for our land managers, for the road service um, grass cutting guys. The picture here shows um, the Limavady grass cutting rod for the council, um, explaining to them why we're doing it, identifying um, the sites, making sure that they know what the sites were, also kind of species identification as well so that they know the difference between invasive species and um, things that they shouldn't be cutting anytime and things the wild flower meadows when they should be cutting training for the volunteers as well involved uh, wildfire identification um, survey training as well so that we could match them up to individual sites um, and also things like austrian scything and we actually now manage um, a few of our sites through scything and um, raking off the hay by hand. And this has proved to be an incredibly popular training, um, but also in a popular um, method of management. Um, and it is just so tranquil, you can actually stop your scything and shoo the frog out of the way um, or stop to admire a ladybird or, or a bumblebee. Um, and because it's a slow and gentle way of doing things as well, it means that insects and animals and everything can get out of the way. The seed falls um, and we rake it off. But an added benefit that we didn't actually think about when we were running this training, we actually ran it in one of our town parks, um, Riverside Park in Balamuni, which is an incredibly popular park in the, it, literally in the middle of the town. And it was a great engagement tool because lots of people came up to us and asked us what we were doing and I remember when. So um, it not only was popular for the volunteers, but also the people using the park too. We developed a selection criteria um, using things like um, the potential of the, the site to recover the practicalities of managing it um, and various other things like that and we started off with 24 road verges which dropped down to 19 at the end of the three years and 16 council parks uh, with 22 areas of um, meadow to manage which has increased um, to 17 parks and 25 areas within it and um, totaling over just about over 11 hectares of council uh, parks are now being managed um, as meadows. Uh, another incredibly important part of the project was also the control of invasive species such as Japanese knotweed and that is one of the key outcomes for the um, road service was um, to reduce the spread of Japanese knotweed on the road network. So the signs here that you see um, is don't mow warning invasive species and the other ones that we have is don't mow yet for the meadows and we're learning as we, we went along so at 60 miles an hour the don't mow warning invasive species and the um, don't mow yet signs are very similar so um, we wanted to make sure that people could instantly tell the difference between um, the two signs and the reasons why these sites were being managed separately. So the, the invasive species one now has uh, white in the centre with green writing and the don't mow yet one remains the same and that has helped a lot in identifying both for the grass cutters who know instantly they've never to cut that and also for um, the, the general public so that they know what we're doing and what the management is and also 
by identifying all these sites where possible, they're also being treated um, and contained and eradicated if at all possible. The um, slide you see um, under the selection criteria is Bishop's Road um, and you'll see there the lovely cuckoo flowers on it. The picture in the centre is a, a farmer cutting and baling the Drum Croon Road that we saw earlier um, and taking away hay for fodder. And the one with invasive species is uh, Ballywillan Road, which is also one of our um, Don't Mow Roads as well. But getting to the important bits, um, did a small change in management have big benefits? And the answer is yes. Um, all these pictures on this slide were taken on our sites. Um, and you can see from here, this is the Joey Dunlop Centre, which um, is again in Ballymoney. Um, and there's about three acres of grassland there circling the hockey pitch. Um, and you can see it started off just with kind of cut mown grass. Um, and after the kind of first year, we had approximately 50 orchids on the site. By the third year, we had hundreds of orchids of three different species, early northern marsh and common. Um, and you'll see a theme coming through this. Um, a lot of the sites that I have been given are because the, the um, grass cutters have difficulty, um, namely because there are a lot of wet sites. So this was one of the wet sites that they used to get their, their machinery um, bogged down in. So they were quite happy to, to give this over to me for don't mow um, Bresharkin is um, that we had this um, rank field that we weren't using and um, it will eventually become a cemetery when required. At the moment it's the, the extra bit. Um, so it was chest high in docks and nettles and thistles and we all thought that it would take a few years to turn this site around but again within one year we had lovely patches of orchids and clovers. Um, it wasn't the entire site, but um, every year now it is getting um, more and more uh, to look like this rather than the, the rank meadow from before. Uh, Remore Head, which um, I was very lucky to get a bit here because it is um, a high value tourist site in Port Rush. And so they gave me the slope um, you can see in the picture that uh, started uh, 2016, they gave me the upper slope of the site heading over towards the cliff. Um, but we were getting things like bell heather, uh, spring squill, thrift. Um, so and when there was no complaints, um, they then gave me a lower section, a slope, which I'd had my eye on. And as you can see, um, it is covered in orchids. Um, there's heath spotted orchid, we've also got harebells, we've got um, devil's bit scabious, field gentian, all sorts of things going on there um, and we link that management now, the site gets used, the slope gets used um, as a sort of a bandstand towards July but most of the uh, flowers have gone over by then so we're able to incorporate it into other uses of the site as well. Um, Port Nevi, um, again I got the bits that were awkward but it, it's worked out perfectly. You can see the slope down to the car park which is very tricky to um, manage but it has come as an incredible natweed shows there. There's ladies mantle, there's lovely red clovers um, and it all came within the year as well. Um, Limavadi, uh, another lovely collection of wet sites, um, but again it works very well for us, back from park, lots of um, cuckoo flower, um, Bally Kelly bank, there's um, lovely vetches along a bank below a hedge, um, Graceal Glen, there's actually now three sections within that glen and they are beautiful stunning wet meadows as you can see from the picture there. Chenery Park is also 
um, a bit of a wetter area but it's much more enriched so it'll take time to come back but already it's showing signs of improvement. Um, Rural Mills playing field also in Limavady is one of my favourites um, and from the second I walked on it with its short mown grass and I saw all the sedges in it and all the plants just waiting to um, emerge um, and now you see it with meadow bitchlings, um, self heels, uh, all, all sorts, orchids, uh, fine grasses, it is incredible. And this site as well is right next to the play park. So you, we're able to encourage the children to run in through it by cutting a weedy path through it. And that also shows people that it's an active management too. If you are cutting a metre edge around it or bordering the footpath and also cutting a, a, a grass right through it when the sites are big enough to encourage people in as well. Um, Kinbane Head, this is the road down to Kinbane Head and you can see um, the beautiful harebells, uh, ladies mantle, ladies bed straw, all sorts and Bishop Road that we saw earlier. Um, this is Quilly Road, which is up in Coleraine, and this is another one of the sites that we actually cut and lift. With the road verges, some of the sites are just we try and cut them at the right time. Um, other sites where we can, um, we cut and lift, and the sites that we manage to cut and lift, the transformation has been incredible. Um, here on Quilly Road, there is common spotted orchid, knapweed, red clover, bush fetch, all sorts of things. Um, and this particular verge is, is my site. This is the site that I do the litter picking on and do the surveys on. So I, I'm the volunteer effectively for that, that site. So I'm a bit biased when it comes to Quilly Road. Um, management, we have to be a bit creative about the management. Um, and you can see from these various pictures, we have um, employed lots of different methods. Um, so the um, picture up, um, what you can see the sea in the background is um, Port Rush from Moorhead and the council has a slope mower so we use the remote control slope mower which uh, the, the guys love playing with um, uh, boys in their toys um, and they cut the, the slope with the remote control slope mower and then they blow the grass cuttings down to the bottom and then rake them off at the bottom. And this works perfectly. And as I said before, this has to get cut slightly earlier because it's used as a, as a stand um, uh, later on in the season. We also have a site at McGilligan Point where we use cattle to graze it. So we do light overwintering cattle on this coastal site, which has made a tremendous difference. Um, we have used silage contractors. You can see down in the bottom corner the ginormous um, uh, silage mowing machine, and it is mowing about a three acre section in Riverside Park in Ballamoney. Um, and then it gets uh, baled um, and that site, um, unfortunately because of the litter and the dog filing, which is, is an issue on the more public sites, um, we can't um, use that for far farmers for fodder, so it goes off to our composting site. Um, we have landscape contractors who have come in and cut the smaller bits of the meadow. That's the picture in the, in the bottom. And of course, as I mentioned before, we have volunteers who actually scythe and rake off. Um, and up the top, um, the council, this is not our machine, but we have um, now purchased uh, machinery so that we can cut and lift some of our own sites ourselves. This is a cut and collect with a high tip that then can be tipped into the back of a waiting van, which can then take the compost to our compost site. We have also purchased a small mower um, in, the, in the bottom middle picture as well. Again, it has a high tip for doing the small difficult sites. Um, so between, and we also have farmers, I should say as well, that are linked into to certain sites, about four or five sites now are linked with local farmers who actually cut and lift the fodder um, at zero cost 
to um, use for, for grazing or to use for fodder for their stock. Um, and that has a relationship has worked incredibly well. Um, we've done uh, biodiversity surveys on all of our sites and we do that annually with volunteers and we've used that to help us create management options, just very simple, easy to follow options, page or two long, saying what's there, um, what's important, when it can be cut from, when it should be surveyed at, um, so that anybody can follow it and understand. And the biodiversity surveys have actually shown that every site has shown an improvement of the ratios from um, flowering to grasses, um, that the ratio is increasing with grasses, or sorry, with uh, wildflowers increasing on each site um, to some that are now 50-50 or more. And we were quite worried at the start of the project. We had three years and that was driven by the funding that we could secure. So we were a bit concerned that we wouldn't be able to show a difference in that short period of time. But we were very surprised that um, most sites were showing an improvement within one year and showing quite considerable improvements um, after the three years. Um, engagement and influencing policymakers, as I said before, without the support of the community and our volunteers, we wouldn't have been able to drive this project forward and get the engagement we had. Um, we, through our training um, as well, we try to bring in other organisations um, and we have <coughs> had interest from the Netherlands to America, um, there are lots of other organisations that are now adopting this. Uh, the new DERA headquarters in Valley Kelly has a welfare meadow now. Um, Rural Valley Country Park in Limavady, the Environment Agency, have several areas of don't mow within their site. Um, Mid Ulster Council, Oman District, Newry and Mourne, um, they are all um, having their own don't mow style projects now um, and uh, Cork as well uh, there was a post on the Facebook page recently um, and even Cork's um, getting in on the act too. As part of all this in order to try and influence the policy makers so that we could make a change and show a difference um, and also show that it's not just um, a handful of people that, that we can really make a difference and this is a serious object, a uh, serious objective. We um, did a cost benefit analysis and economic appraisal um, and it showed that this style of management was could save over £63,000 annually for the 11 hectares that we are currently managing in this way. Um, it also showed that there was over £2,000 uh, annually in ecosystem services benefit. Now, this is a very um, low estimate because we weren't able to do any sort of detailed analysis before we started. So this is using other um, methods of calculating. Um, but it still shows that there is not only a, a cost benefit, um, but also that there is a benefit to ecosystem services as well. Um, the PR campaign actually was huge, um, doing uh, all sorts of newsletters, engagements, uh, the website, we had a dedicated website, which was invaluable um, for the project and is still going. We did, oh, I don't know how many events and, and met, 50,000 or more people, um, or it seems like it anyway, over the three years, trying to do face-to-face -face engagement activities, having fun, making sure that everybody knew what we were doing and why, and that it was a positive choice as well. And um, the Facebook page has been fantastic. It is uh, run by um, the star volunteer, Donna Rainey, who actually was the brainchild behind the project. She came up with the, the ideas and then we ran with it. Um, and without Donna's input, um, it certainly wouldn't be the success it is. Um, and the Facebook 
um, page certainly wouldn't be. So um, we like sharing. So um, if you could like us and share us, that would uh, be great. And you'll uh, never regret it because Donna posts the most amazing information and pictures on it. So um, please like us and share us. Um, the, we also created a uh, busy flow and friends. We were keen to add a dimension for the primary school um, children. So we worked with the designers and a, and a fantastic artist to create um, six two minute videos um, to teach about um, pollination, hay meadows, um, invasive species. Um, and they're all available up on the website along with um, colouring ins and activities as well. Um, as I said, and I keep going back to one of the, the big things of the project was to try and change public opinion, try and bring the decision makers on board. Um, so a key role in this was our public perception service, which we ran every year. Um, year one, there was about 190 people took part, 263 in year two, and we did a real push in year three, and there was 590 um, completed the survey. So um, when asked if it was important to uh, manage areas for wildlife, 97%, then 98, and 98. Um, when shown a picture of short mown verge and a, a don't mow verge, a longer grass, and asked which they preferred, um, year one it was 80, year two it was 87, year three it was 81. However, there was also about 7% who said that they didn't, they, they didn't know, they didn't care. So I'm taking that as uh, the higher um, 87, 88%. Um, also, um, there was a, a general consensus that it was very important to increase public understanding, and that was 95 up to 96%. And then also when they were asked about the quality of green space um, and whether it impact their decision on how often to visit an area or whether or not, um, it was 80, 93 and 98%, which is very high. Um, and it also, as a, you know, tourist destination, it shows that this kind of um, activity and um, biodiversity management does have an impact on people's decisions as to whether they're going to come and visit or not. Oops. Um, so, as I said before, we like sharing. Um, and uh, another key output of the project was to share all our outcomes. So our, um, from our surveys to our ID guides, to our training manuals, to our selection criteria, to our management guidelines, our economic appraisal, um, everything is available on the website. Um, you can get to it through the, the main website, don'tmowletitgrow.com, or you can go directly to the toolkit dot don'tmowletitgrow.com. And um, everything's there, and everything's there free to use. Even our signs, the art files of, their, of our signs are there, so you can download it and adapt it um, to your own site, um, put your own logos on and your own website. Um, everything is there because it was just very important for us to be able to share what we did so that other people can learn from our mistakes and move forward with it. Um, the pictures on this slide. Um, Remore head is under the writing and you can see the bird's foot trefoil and the thrift and all sorts coming up there. Um, the bird's foot trefoil is on the point road um, and not only do we have the road verge there but that's also where we have the, the two hectares of paddock where the cattle graze um, and the blue flower of the loose in the bottom is also found along that point road as well. Oops. Um, so overall, positive change for people and positive change for biodiversity. I love the the sign. It kind of, um, as the old advert says, it does what it says on the tin. 
um, and the picture with the three different um, grass managements kind of shows that it's not all plain sailing. It's quite difficult sometimes. So the slice of grass next to the fence is cut by Forest Service, probably about once a month. The slice of grass next to the road between the path is cut by um, DFI roads. And the um, close crop site grass on the other side of the road was actually managed by National Trust. However, this has a great story because National Trust have now um, started to manage that closely manicured um, area of grass as a don't mow meadow now as well. So um, it is full of cuckoo flower and vetches and all sorts, and it is looking stunning. So changes do come, they might come slowly, but changes definitely um, do come along. And this, I keep this slide in as a reminder of the success stories and how things can change. Um, so the uh, project wrapped up last year um, with the funding portion. So is it the beginning or is it the end? Well, it is the beginning, it's the next phase. Um, we are lucky enough that the DFI roads have agreed to continue with the management of um, all the road verges that are uh, currently in the project and they are um, looking for opportunities for new sites. Um, the council have also agreed to continue to manage all the sites um, that are currently within the, the project and also um, are always looking for more sites, which is brilliant. So we will continue. It is, it is uh, uh, all about changing people's perception, not only within the staff, but within the public to show that there is, um, that, that there is, this is an active management choice. There's a, a, an appetite for it within the community. And by just changing the management, not planting, not reseeding, but just changing the management to cut and lift once a year um, at the end of the summer, August, September, you can create a beautiful meadow yourself. Um, as I say, we're always looking for volunteers. So if anybody wants to help out, um, this is uh, Donna who I was telling you about who manages our Facebook page and pretty much does everything else to help as well, which is fantastic. Um, just get in touch. Um, and before I wrap this up, um, I just wanted to show you one last slide, which is actually my front garden and I call it my postage stamp meadow. Um, and as you can see, it's a tiny, tiny space. These pictures were taken in May um, and I've been managing it as a meadow now for two years. Um, and this year, I think I had eight or nine um, cuckoo flowers. Earlier in the season, there were celandines and just now it's full of daisies and buttercups and the clover is just getting ready to flower too. So um, pretty much anybody, no matter what size, can have a lawn, um, just or can have a meadow, just change the management. So that's me. Thanks. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. So, and thank you all for joining us tonight and for listening what to what Rachel has to say. Um, fantastic project. Um, the video, as I say, will be up on our YouTube channel, which is EGLA Limerick. Um, so if anybody wants to share it um, to anybody who missed the webinar tonight, it will be there. So and Anne, will you ask people, just because we need to get 100 subscribers to be actually able to have our URL customised. So um, if you could like or subscribe to the channel as well, it would be great. Very good. Thanks, Sinead. And thank you all. Good night, everybody. Night, Rachel. Night, Sinead. Okay. <laughs> thank you.